Hello everyone, I'm back for the third time today to bring you these. Yeah, I did some Thomas shopping when I was in England, no questions asked. So yeah, and it's obvious to tell by some of these models that I got them from Thomas Land. So, first off, let's kick things off with something I should have done in the whip video. No, the video about Bill, Whiff, and Ashima, but never managed to do because I never had reference. So here's Whiff, and here's the take-along version. I prefer the Adventures version because it has side detailing, unlike this guy. This is m this is more accurate than that. So even though I never got a chance to own a Take and Play with from 2013 or 2014, I'm still glad I got this. So good part on Mattel, even though they ruined it the very next year, but I don't mind. And the only minor detail that uh, the Take Along with has over the Adventures with is the back lamp. Nothing more, nothing less. And even so that the cabs are missized, but whatever. Next we have All Engines Go Emily. Now this is an item I opened up in England, but I didn't manage to review it. Now you might be thinking, oh god, this guy is reviewing an All Engines Go diecast. Boy, oh boy, am I going to hate this guy. I'm going to tell you this. I do not watch All Engines Go. I do not support the show. The only thing I support about the show are the diecasts. And this Emily shows why. Look at the level of accuracy with the wheel configuration. A 2... No, a 4-2-2 two, two wheel arrangement at long last. And it's bound time all engines go fix this issue because look at Emily. Every single die cast range depicts her as a 2-2-2. Two, two, two. And I'm tired of it. She's supposed to be a 4-2-2. Two, two. Thank you, Mattel, for, compl for first off giving us a correct Emily. But second, why did it take you this long to do it? And I don't want to hear anybody in the comments going after me for reviewing All Engines Go toys. Do it, and you will be reported. I do not allow negative criticism on my channel. But still, Emily looks quite nice. The big wheel here is one giant mold. And I might put the old... Uh, push along tender on this so it would look nicer and a tiny bit more accurate but still all in all even though this Emily has kind of a weird face and weird shape she's a good model all around and even has cab windows nice job Mattel now let's get to the ones which haven't been so here goes nothing. Let's start with the one and only number three engine, Henry. And I'm glad I found this item at the Entertainer. Yeah, that's right. I found this item at the Entertainer. I found Emily at Smith's Toy Superstores and I was lucky to do so. So... With that out of the way, let's unbox Henry and see what he looks like on the outside. So here's Henry, and my goodness, this model looks good. Now, I've seen people on the internet uh, drill out uh, these, whole, uh, these rivets at the bottom, especially for diecasts such as Henry, Gordon, and even Edward, in order to make show-accurate models. And I am actually quite pleased with that. With Henry, I could say, because this level of accuracy is amazing on this model. He looks like a Black 5, but he still has those wheel arches. Yeah, 
at least the Earthen model didn't have arches. And as for the tender, I don't know why they finally made it accurate in Push Along, whereas in Adventures, and even to a lesser extent Collectible Railway, turned his tender into a fouler tender. And again, they still have those rivets at the bottom, there's the name right there. And all in all, everything looks good. The red lining, the yellow lining on the cab window, the handrails, everything. Henry, is, this push along Henry is a welcome addition into my collection. Next up, we have what I call Pride Thomas. But uh, here's a little message. On the back of some of the push along engines, they uh, they don't say that there are any more engines to collect. But as for this Thomas here, it says that there is a racing diesel to collect and a Pride Toby. I already have Pride Toby, so having Pride Thomas in my collection won't make much difference. Let's get it open, shall we? Okay, here's Pride Thomas out of his packaging. He has a lime-colored running plate, has a bit of his green from the early days, as well as Percy and Henry green, Hong Mei blue, Thomas blue, a red chassis, and some yellow wheels. I'd have to say this is a pretty good model. And not to mention, it still has that goofy Thomas face, but I don't mind. In all honesty, this is the best model I've seen. And the model speaks for itself with the Trackmaster coupling in front and the coupling at the back. So yeah, this is a Thomas I'd recommend buying if you are a person in the LGBT community who really loves Thomas and Friends, or just... Wish to support the Pride community by picking up this item if you are a Thomas fan yourself, but not in the LGBT community. Next we have Trevor from Adventures, and I got this guy at Thomasland for £5. And I'd say the £5 is worth it for this guy, even with Bill and Ashima. So, yeah, with that, let's get him out of the packaging. Now, a while back, I heard on YouTube, uh, on this Take and Play Iceberg, or um, Diecast Iceberg in general, that uh, Trevor's parts were actually used from Fergus parts that they were going to make for the 2016 model. But, um, but when Mattel didn't want to throw them away, they decided, meh, why not make a, a Trevor model? Hell was trying to make Fergus anyway. So with that, we have Fergus. His fly wheel works perfectly. Don't know why they decided to give him normal take and play or uh, Trackmaster. No, wait a minute. Um, take and play adventures wheels. But then again, who am I to complain? This model is excellent. The back coupling will just say that you would probably want to give him a cartload of hay or as in a YTP a cartload of children <laughs> because we all know how much Trevor likes children now don't we <laughs> here's Frankie the steelworks diesel and I got her for five pounds as well from Thomas Land and, well, let's get her open, because I've been waiting to get her for a long time. I really wish I could have gotten uh, Lexi, but unfortunately, Thomas Land didn't have her. Here's Frankie, and mm, a, a bit of a good model. Okay, I'm being fairly dramatic there. This is an excellent model. I love this, because, well... I have Hurricane as well. I can finally add her to the collection of Journey Beyond Sodor characters I have. 
So, yeah, details are pretty nice. Like, for example, the running board is accurate to her design in the movie. And, and even this design is pretty good. Although, this, uh, this here, I always thought it was a funnel when I was... Okay, when I was 12 years old, I thought Frankie was some sort, was some sort of steamy engine hybrid. But now I just realize she's just a diesel. Nothing more, nothing less. The face looks cute, though. I mean, you would probably be able to make a model of Mavis. Although I'm not really sure about that. But anyway, it's a good model and will make a pretty nice addition into my collection. Here's Rajiv. And again, like I said, back of packaging can reveal that there are more engines to collect like Thomas and Diesel. And this is a Trackmaster Push Along original. So I'm going to be very happy to open this guy up. Let's do it. Being fairly honest here, I don't like Rajiv's personality in the TV series. It's not to say he's a bad character, but he's he's just James, but worse. In all honesty, I do like his paintwork, though, and the wheels are nice. I have the minis model for this guy, but I was never satisfied with the minis model, so I decided to get him. Why not? Um, fun fact, I actually found this uh, at The Entertainer, along with Pride Thomas and uh, That Henry, so it's a very nice way to get this guy. I love the cow catcher, how he looks like Emily, sort of, and instead of being a copy of Emily, he's just a copy of Emily with a closed cab. And, well, intricate details aside, this model is pretty nice. My one complaint, though, is that Rajiv's wheels are white and not bronze. Come on, Mattel. How could you get that detail about Rajiv wrong? Pretty good model, though. Here's Shane, the Australian engine. And just going to say it now, the only re the reason I got this guy was because it was originally ten pounds and was reduced to nine pounds, and all because of damaged packaging. So I thought, you know what? Screw it. I'm getting it. I don't care. I'm gonna love this model. Since they didn't have the Adventures version, this was the best I could get. So here's Shane, and okay, excuse my terrible humor, but here goes. What's up, Shane the Pain? Yeah, I know, I've got bad humor, just like the mechanic. Anyway, so here is so here is Shane in all his glory. This model, pretty nice. And... And... I'm guessing the tender, the lettering on it, stands for South Australian Railway. Hmm. Pretty good. Pretty good. And... The tender... I don't know what to think of it. I think it's an Australian design, so... I completely understand. Anyway, that's it for Shane. Here is Hong Mei, the Chinese engine. Now, I decided to pick this model up because, well... Again, five pounds per engine at Thomasland, and I couldn't resist. So, I got it. Now let's get out of that packaging and review her. So here's Hong Mei, the number one Chinese engine. And no, that isn't a joke or me saying she's the best. There's literally a number one on her side painted in Chinese. So yeah, 
She's a pretty nice model, and very similar to Rosie, might I add. But not all that similar. She's pretty nice. She's got the red wheels, the pistons as well. Overall, not a bad model, if I do say so myself. And as for her face, quite cute. And that lamp, too. Nice. Here we have Sonny, the oldest tank engine on the island of Soldor. No, I am not kidding. This guy is the oldest engine on the island of Soldor, straight after Stepney left. So, yeah. With that out of the way, let's get Sonny out of the packaging. Here is Sonny, the tank engine. Now, I know that I brought a thief into my house, but don't worry, he ain't gonna steal nothing. Got my eye on him like a hawk. But still, he's a very nice engine. And in the show, he even goes to work on the Farquhar branch line. So to that I say, cheers, Sonny. You have become the greatest addition to my collection. But unfortunately, the one downside I have to him is that the push-along uh, push footplate just looks terrible, even the chassis. I mean, um, Scrapyard Studios did a great job in placing this guy on an adventure's chassis. I could really use his help with that if I ever obtain maybe a second Sunny model or even decide to break this one up and turn it into an adventures model. Yeah, so cheers to that, Scrapyard Studios. If you're watching this, please help me out. Thank you. Here is Sandy the Rail Speeder, who, ironically enough, is actually based on a Canadian rail car for track inspection. And I must say, looking at this model, it doesn't look too bad, and might be the smallest out of all the push-along models. So with that I say, let's get into it. So here is Sandy the Rail Speeder out of her box, and I must say that this coupling design is strange as all hell. And even the back coupling looks nice. I have to say, she looks very similar to Philip in some way, shape, or form. But I like her. And not to mention the fact that she comes with this little digger thing. I don't know what this is supposed to be. I mean, it's her accessory, but uh, then again, I wouldn't see this being used on a Canadian rail car, so... Yeah, I might use this as a scrap piece, but I'm not sure. I'll have to give myself some time to think about it. As for Sandy, well, while she isn't in her good colors, I do say she's a fine little Canadian box car. Finally, for the die casts, we have the one that we don't talk about. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I admit, my humor is terrible, but what am I supposed to do about it? I mean, his name is Bruno. How can you ignore that and not make a joke about saying that we don't talk about him? Anyway, let's get him out of the packaging because this character is actually pretty good and would make an excellent addition into any Thomas series which uses original models. And I'll explain why. So here's Bruno out of his packaging. And yeah, I do notice that he has the number 43 on his tender. I don't know what that's all about. And no, do not say anything like he is Gordon and Henry's kid. That wouldn't make any sense anyway. So, with number 43, Bruno here, let's see. Well, he's got a pretty nice face. And, yeah, Bruno brake car. Um... Okay, now to the reason as to why I think this guy is interesting. It's because of the fact that he is based on a Pennsylvanian brake van. 
which do have two sets of chassis. So what I say is just take Bruno in and treat him as an older character. Not as a young character like he is in All Engines Go, and trust me, it's because I've seen the trailer, not the show. Give this guy a chance and give him an older and wiser voice. Because when I see Bruno with that face, I feel like saying, Well, you can always count on me. And also, try not to get lost for once in your life. So yeah, that's the voice I picture Bruno with. Anyway, that's gonna do it for Bruno and the diecasts. Now for a sweet little send-off. And finally we have the two minis that I had gotten while we were at Thomas Land. I don't know if this is supposed to be Belle or Rosie. But this looks ugly as all hell. I mean, why was this even made? And then we have Sheriff Thomas, who I must say is not too bad. Just by looking at it, he looks pretty good. I mean, he's got the intricate details of a sheriff, and yeah, that's all I have to say. All in all, I'd say that this one is garbage and this one's fine. So yeah. That's going to do it for the Thomas stuff I got at Drain Manor. Let me know with the thoughts in your comments down below. This is Nostalgic Dimensions 2005 saying, uh, signing off. And stay tuned because I will be making a video on the Thomas DVDs I had gotten from Thomas Land, CEX, and last but not least, uh, HMV. Goodbye, everybody.